What is going on, everybody? Unfortunately, we got only four participants entered Community Build Awards when I initially wanted at least five. But you work with what you have. I guess the idea sounded a little bit more fun in my head than it really is. Anyways, I decided that being short one participant is not the reason to pull the plug on the idea and here we are, stage 2, where I show you the footage of the testing of the nominated builds with some of my commentary. And you vote for the builds you like the most. Link to the community poll is in the description. I want to thank all 4 participants who submitted their builds. You all are absolute legends and this video is happening thanks to you. And I also had a lot of fun playing your builds. Without further ado, let's start. And the very first participant who entered the awards is Dumbass with his heavy hitter build. First of all, sorry if I missed something, but the crest of Desperate Heroics didn't work in it. When I put all items, there was not enough vitality for it to work. Maybe I missed something, I don't know, uh, really sorry if I did, but it didn't really matter that much because it ended up working pretty well even without it. When I looked into this build, I was confused about it. But when I started to play, all weird synergies started falling in place. The onslaught challenge is not the hard one, but with this build, it was an absolute walk in the park. This build packs over 400 strengths, which is very solid. It has some defense and vitality. With addition to Surger's Waste Perk, it gives pretty nice safety net. Valor with Boon of the Valor and Soul Idol enchantment are adding very, very solid healing. I think the combo of those with Surda Waste, allowing for very aggressive, maybe even a bit too reckless gameplay through very solid self-sustain. Adding Jotunheim enchantment set was also a great idea, because Valor is a very important part of the gameplay in this build from both defensive and offensive perspective. Round of Purification has great strength stat to make builds scarier and it helps to get rid of status effects, which are not diminished by Surda's Waste. Another great defensive element is Radiant Ward and Handles. I don't have a great habit of using those right, but I have seen people doing it and those were pretty great help to safely spin the blades. Berserker Gauntlets are there to reset the heavy hitting relic and Guiding Light boosting luck to make this happen even more often. Dumbass suggested to use either Mimir Head or Skofnung. I went with Mimir's Head because I didn't play with it that much. While Mimir Head is applying an absolute absurd amount of bias for us to the enemy, I have my own reservation about it. Though I think I need another video about relics. Anyway, if you want an easy life, Skofnum is definitely your choice. All of that brings us to the boss fight. I'm gonna say if you want to use maximum of this build potential, you need decent micromanagement skills. Because there are a lot of things going on, but when you pull it off, it absolutely destroys stuff. Don't judge by the gameplay you see now, because my best run ended up dying because of a silly mistake in the end, and I didn't manage to replicate it in the successful one. And successful one doesn't look as great as it could, so you will have to trust my word on this one. But what did I mean when I said a lot of going on? Well, there are regular vaporized frost and extinguish flame stuff. You better manage it in every build, but here you also have guiding light random weapon buff. Now, whenever you see Guiding Light buff, you need to think, oh well, Guiding Light is good, but it doesn't do as much damage as Vaporize Frost, so Blades take a priority, but also we have Permafrost and Emulation, again, very strong buff by default, we can't let those sit in this build because there is no Maspelheim set, which means if we don't activate it, we are missing out on too much damage. Plus extra from 9 Realm Hint. So it can take even more priority, but not when we have buffed weapon match the weapon that will do vaporize for us damage. This is actually more effective. Uh, also, we want to get use of Berserker wrists, so we need to use Mimir more often. But if you make mistake with Mimir, this is very punishing. So you need to be extra cautious about Gnar moves and Runic Shield. To unleash maximum potential of this build, you will need to constantly make those micro decisions as you play. I personally think that this is great fun, but some people may find it overwhelming. Overall, very creative build, well rounded. If you like this one, vote for Heavy Hitter in the poll. 
Okay, there were two builds submitted that were extremely identical. Now I have to act like a primary school teacher and ask who copied from who. Well, that's a joke of course. Lord of War submitted a build in the form of a video and I was aware about it only because I was tagged on it. So Lightwalker couldn't know and shortly submitted the build in the form of a comment. When I saw that it was like, well armor is the same and I will be able to capitalize on differences in other items. But when I started doing the video I realized the only difference between builds were Axe Knob, Shield and one enchantment. Well, I did my best to highlight the differences. One more thing, I had to change Ron because I didn't have Ron of Disruption, which you both selected, uh, on the save. Uh, it looks like a bug because I believe the way to get this Ron is from the Stags quest and this quest is 100% complete. So yeah, not sure what is going on here. I hope you both are fine with Ron of Absorption instead. So the idea of the build is to use Manny's chest to improve the Vaporize Frost and Extinguish Flame damage in combo with Undying Pyrus Frost and Waste for Immolation gain. And this totally makes sense, because if you have all the skills upgrades applying status effects and happy to change weapons more often, you kinda do not really need prolonged status effect. Now instead we have better Runic and Insane Immolation Permafrost gain rate, not only because of armor, but also because of unity handles and enchantments. Vanaheim and Muspelheim enchantments are obvious choices for this build as well. This is very active, but slightly easier gameplay than in the previous build. Even though you have to constantly switch weapons and activate permafrost, the decisions making process is easier. It packs a very solid punch, very fun, but it is obviously not prioritizing any defensive stats and making mistakes with it is quite punishing. Hint of Attuned Elements is not optional in this build unless you are willing to completely drop the ball on a spear and never use it. Lord of War provided full build including Rage, Relic and Runic Attacks, which is great. I had much fun playing with something I am not that used to, but I don't believe you will hurt this build by changing any of those. Ok, to the differences. Ice and Fire built by Lord of War featured Dauntless Shield and Runic Knob for the Axe, and Permafrost Antagonizer by Lightwalker featured Onslaught Shield and Radiant Reflection Grip. Surprisingly, those little changes were enough to have an impact on the gameplay. Permafrost Antagonizer with Onslaught Shield felt more comfortable on 99 enemies. Onslaught Shield provides a safe way to navigate the battlefield and launch enemies into the air so you can start an air juggling combo. At the same time, Radiant Reflection Grip allows you to gain some permafrost while staying back and safe. Extra 20 Vitality from one of the enchantments is a nice little touch. Even though it's not gonna save you from extra hit, it can negate damage from accidentally get caught on fire. On the other hand, Dauntless Shield motivates you to play more aggressively on bosses and requires more mobility from you, giving more chances to fill out stun meter in Runic Knob in pair with Muspelheim set mitigates damage loss in case you activate Glacial Permafrost when enemy is frozen. Altogether, this option feels way more aggressive on the boss fight and has higher damage output potential. Those differences are very minor, but as I said, it is still noticeable. So if you like very active fast paced weapon swapping gameplay and prefer a more aggressive option of it, vote Ice and Fire. If you want to maintain most of those qualities but add a bit of a comfort on the regular encounters, vote Permafrost Antagonizer. Also, not biasing anyone, but Permafrost Antagonizer is a sick name. And we get to the last participant. I'm terribly sorry if I will butcher your name here. Here's Yak with a slightly different take on Bloodthirst Retaliation build from my previous video. This is a stun build with Stingburn Chest for maximum defense and self-sustain, and Nidavellir Wrist and Waist. That also packs respectable defense, but add on top great perk to prevent stun drain and some vitality for survivability. I know that challenges are tuned for level 7, but even though sometimes they can cause a bit of a trouble for squisher builds, because threads are coming from different directions and it's easy to make a mistake if you're not careful. With this build I was distracted by my wife and my dog, 
taking call from my mom, reading notifications from work chat during the challenge, basically playing as sloppy as possible, and yet finished it with almost full HP. In this build, Kratos is close to unkillable on regular encounters. And as I said before, Standing Fang does an extremely good job in mitigating lack of damage during regular encounters. Nidavellir's set helps hips on boss battles. With any other set, if Na starts doing her Asgard move, you can say goodbye to stun meter without it. When Hrol freezes and does his AoE, you still can maintain a stand on him with a spear or arrows, but it is less safe than just running around. You can argue that if you play aggressive enough, there are more optimal choices, but I would say even if it will add to the effectiveness, it doesn't worth the fun you will lose because of the need to prevent stun bar from draining. Svartalfheim and Niflheim enchantment sets are obviously there with Stunning Fang. In this variation, Regeneration Essence and Desperate Heroics took the last two slots. Regeneration may not feel like much, but it slowly adds up, especially when most of the damage you take is not that big. Desperate Heroics never activated during my test because 99 enemies were way too easy and I was doing boss uh, no damage. But I suspect that it will do a good job if enemies are stronger and actually start to pose some threat to this absolute behemoth of a build. This is one of the builds where runic choices are actually essential. Curse of Yacht provided multiple options, I tried some of them, and here is the list of what are the best options, in my opinion. Hell's Touch is must-have, very fast AoE, high stun damage with low cooldown, an absolute beast. For the heavy, I would choose Leviathan Roar for bosses, again for massive stun damage, or Mist of Helheim or Breath of Thamur. If you pump those when Bloodthirsty Restoration is active in big group of enemies, well, that's entire HP pool back, just try it. The last one is actually not something I was thinking about before Herzogiak submitted those builds, so full credit for letting me trying something new. For Blades, Heavy is not that important, but Cyclone is the best choice for Light. Good damage, good stun damage, decent AoE. For the Spear, Huldra's Charge is your best friend. It's a great utility running that helps to close gaps safely. It also does very solid stun damage. Siphoning Element is crucial because Spear with Siphon Element does extra status damage and if enemy doesn't have any element, it will siphon I don't know what and it increases stun damage. If you already have a Siphon Element and use Holder's Charge, your previous element will explode during si siphoning of the new one. Again, skyrocketing your stun damage. If high survivability stun build is your thing, Void Bloodthirst Retaliation 2.0. And this is it for today. Please vote for the builds you like. I will let this poll to bake for 7 days. All participants, again, you are an absolute legend. I hope I did it justice for all your builds. Uh, obviously, there is much more to them, but I didn't want to blow this video and make it too long. I really had fun. I tried some new things. Well, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.